The Midwest tour, the, the Twin City tour, extrude this, extruder tour. Extrude that city? Yeah, I don't know. We, anyway. They'll come up eventually. <laughs> Hey everyone, Jake Clark from Fargo 3D Printing, uh, 3D Printing Ally with uh, Tyler Pope is where we're at today. Um, and we are in front of your biggest machine here at the facility? Biggest footprint, yes. <clears throat> okay. And how big of an area does this machine take up? Um, well, if you count all the support equipment and everything like that, uh, like 15 by 15 feet, you know, so that's quite a bit. Okay. And this is a SLS machine, correct? This is a SLS machine by 3D Systems. Yep. Okay. Um, can we go ahead and open that up and, and actually see what's on the inside? Inside. We have a build chamber here in the center. We have a build inside here cooling right now. And we have feed chambers on either side. So each layer, the build chamber moves down five thousandths of an inch. The feed piston moves up. Roller comes across and puts a nice even layer of material down. The next layer... The roller goes the other direction. So just back and forth, all in the all. And this uses uh, laser sintering. So there's actually a laser up. Where is that located? So we have a CO2 laser up here. So we're actually uh, using heat to, to bind these. It's sintering the, the particles together. The heaters here on the print tray <coughs> actually preheat the material to about 10 degrees away from its melting point. So there's heaters around the build chamber, there's heaters in the build uh, plate, and there's heaters here. And it's all to keep that uh, material just at the perfect temperature. And then the laser just takes it up and over that, uh, the melting point. Okay. And um, what material do you actually have in here right now? So we have nylon 12 in the machine right now. Uh, there is a lot of different materials uh, available for SLS. A lot of filled, like aluminum filled, carbon filled, uh, uh, glass filled materials. Um, this machine is capable of running all of them, but uh, we, we just run the nylon 12. Okay. Have you ran any of the other materials before or just primarily the nylon 12? Just nylon 12. And what, um, you know, you're saying that it takes quite a while to cool down the, the, the machine. How long does it take really to get a whole print going to, from, from start to finish? On this one, it really depends on the depth. Uh, a full build can be 16 to 18 inches deep, and that could take 40 to 50 to maybe even 60 hours to run, and then it could be another 40 hours to cool down before you can even pull the parts out. And at that point, they are still very warm. When we get to the breakout station, they're still burning your hands, so you like to let them cool down even more. Uh, if we keep the build under 6 inches, we can usually get it out the next day. Okay, and how hot does the build actually get within um, the build chamber there? Uh, the build itself is well over 500 degrees down at its core, so it, it gets pretty toasty down there. Okay, and you actually have a build in there currently, correct? We do. It's cooling off. It's uh, still a little little toasty in there. What, what is it at right now? Uh, well, our meat thermometer only goes up to 190, and it passed that a while ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but this is the build that's actually in there. <clears throat> So the great thing about SLS is that we can pack parts down and inside and around and utilize as much space as we can. And that's really important with these machines because the excess material that's in that build is can, it's called cake. It can't be used 100% in the next build. It's kind of like regrind when you're dealing with plastics. Uh, so you can only use one-third of that, one-third of uh, virgin material, one-third of overflow, the material that's gone into the overflow bins. Uh, so utilizing or turning as much of that into part is really important on these machines. Okay. And what sort of accuracy can you get with the part itself? In X and Y, again, it's laser-based, kind of like the SLA. So in X and Y, it's usually really good within plus or minus 5 thou. Uh, building up in Z in this one, the taller the part, it, it really exaggerates the error. So it can get to be plus or minus 10 or so. Uh, but we, we try to keep everything within plus or minus 5. And then as far as the breakout process, is it more like an archaeological dig? Is it, you know, do, do you have to uh, vacuum out the parts? So first stage is to uh, raise the build up into this plexiglass uh, bin here and then slide the, the stainless steel underneath it. And then we bring the whole build out, bring it over to the breakout station here. So this is the excess powder from the last build. So just like you said, it's, it's like archaeology. You dig down, you find the parts, uh, you set them aside. You, once you get all the parts, you clean up the table and then take the parts and go into the blast cabinet. So the blast cabinet takes that excess material off the parts <clears throat> and blasts it away. Um, and then after that, then we go over to the air handler over there with a blow gun and just uh, clean the parts off, clean off all the excess material. Smallest feature that you can do on these? About 30,000 uh, is about the smallest you can do because, because of the heat involved. It's, it's, it's always going to be bigger than that. Uh, deep holes. Um, 
while it's possible to print them, it's not always possible to clean them out. Uh, so uh, it, it, a little bit of geometry depending on what's actually possible to get cleaned out of, of this part. And then, like I said, the excess material, um, some people don't understand that, you know, we, we do lose that material. We have a very, like a mesh type part. We don't regain, re retain that material on the inside. So it's a four cubic inch part, but we're going to use 12 cubic inches to build your part and lose that material. So that's where uh, kind of a misconception on how inexpensive this build, this process can be. Okay. And um, how long have you actually had this machine in your facility? We've had it over three years. Okay. And how is it just one man runs the runs the whole machine? Is there does it take multiple people to actually to, to run this? It's it's one person. Um, obviously, while it's running, it doesn't need anything. The programming doesn't take a lot of time on this one. It's more about layout and orientation. Um, and then it's just it's one person just working through them, and we'll team up on it to uh, uh, speed things up sometimes. But pretty much, it's a one man operation. And the the uh, um, slicer software, let's say, is there an automated thing where you can just like say um, you know make the make the uh, oh, what's the term I'm auto looking packing. for? Yeah, auto packing or uh, um, I can't think of the other term that I that they use in, in machine. No, I, I'll I'll think of it later. But <laughs> what uh, is does it do that automatically, or do you have to go to a secondary program to generate that? So the software that's on the machine does that to a certain extent, the auto packing and and layout. Um, it's not very intuitive, so um, software like um, Materialized Magics or NetFab, you can do it a lot easier and a lot better and a lot more efficient on, on, in software like that. Is there anything else you want to add about SLA printing in general compared to like FDM or SLA? Uh, SLS is best for uh, if you need a lot of parts, and nylon is a good material for you, um, like I said, because you can pack a bunch of parts in there. If uh, We've done part runs of up to 2,000. We did these little cats, believe it or not. See, you need 2,000 of them. So we, we made two. It's a crazy cat lady. Well, it's close. <laughs> um, <clears throat> So that was the only way to do it because you don't have as much hands-on cleaning. Uh, when you do a lot of parts, a lot of times we'll rack them up. They'll be attached by very lightweight structures so that we can handle them better, clean them better, count them better, and then separate them out uh, at the end. So uh, if you have a lot of parts to do, uh, then the SLS is a really good option. And then color, that's one thing that I that I kind of thought about. How do you, like, because this material is pretty much white, is there a way to color this this sort of thing? Because it's nylon, it will dye. So we dye parts black here. Uh, there's companies out there that are like uh, Dimation. I just heard about them. They sent some samples in. Uh, they're doing uh, equipment that's just for dyeing nylon parts, so you can pretty much get any color into the rainbow. Oh, very interesting. Um, well, again, thank you for your time today about talking about your SLS machine and the process that goes into it. Um, if you want to know more, reach out to Tyler. What is the website that they can find you at? Uh, 3dprintingally.com or uh, call us at 612-285-3221. Perfect. And then uh, if you do have any questions, reach out to him or you can reach out to us. Again, this is Jay Clark for Fargo 3D Printing, Tyler Pope for 3D Printing Ally, and thank you for watching. Thank you.